Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A renewal is taking place in our hearts because we are receiving your word and it's changing our thinking, it's changing our mentality. Thank you for releasing your thoughts to us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now I was telling you something yesterday about the corruption and the Lord said deal with the money issue. Deal with the money issue. If you don't deal with the money issue, you won't deal with any issue. See? Now, we were talking about yesterday how even the SARS were, you know, we, we were clamoring for to end. How did they become evil? How did they become corrupt? Because of money. Because of money. Of course, number one, they are Numeration is too poor. Too poor. You, I mean, you don't want to know what these people in. Now, secondly, there are lots of evil men around. So I told you yesterday, I said, listen, if the land is full of evil people, there is no way a righteous man will rule well. Putting a righteous man there, they will be revolting every day. See, because people have been accustomed to evil. That's why I tell you this. To change the system, a lot of prayer has got to go in into it. Now, why prayer? I'll tell you. What we require is a higher wisdom to deal with the issues on ground. Especially in our nation. Now, now, now you find this in every nation, not just in our nation. Every nation have corrupt people. Some are just more civilized than the others. But you see this corruption thing, you find it everywhere because human beings are the same. Now, listen to me. If we want to deal with an issue like this, what we require first is a higher wisdom. Secondly, is cooperation from the people. Now, to get the cooperation from the people, for example, look at what happened. Peaceful protests going on and, and by young people. And it, it turned, it in most places, turned into a jamboree. Yes, it was a serious business. But you see, the young people saw how even in their fight to relax, which is a good thing to keep their sanity. Then, the same young people, I want you to follow now, the same young people were sent against other young people. And what happened? Destruction came into me. People began to, and see what's going on now. People are looting things, people are destroying shops. I mean, Everything is, that is going on is not being carried out by old people. It's being carried out by young people. Now, how come the evil young people have suddenly overpowered the good young people? I'll tell you the truth. Because number one, they are more. Number two, they are vicious. But you say, but we're fighting for them. They don't understand that. Now, that's one thing you need to understand about this society. There are people who don't have their minds connect, not even one atom of God in their mind. And those people are more in number than the good people. And the only way you can deal with that, see, that's why prayer, I said lots of prayer have to get into it. In, 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 into this. When I mean lots of prayer, lots of prayer. Now, to pray this kind of prayer, first of all, you must bring yourself under God. Not just, oh God, kill these people. Remove this man as our president. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Listen. When we go before the Lord, the first thing we do is to bring ourselves under him. 
we believe in his authority. For example, it is God who chooses who your leaders are. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. It is God. He said, no, but we voted them in. <laughs> okay. Well done. There are people who have won election, but did not survive swearing in. They died before they were sworn, and someone else was sworn in without them redoing the election. So you, so you think he just died. No. That one was to pave the way for the real person to come in. God, God knows how to fix these things. And to many times, many cases, because a leader doesn't favor your cause, because a leader doesn't favor what you think, you call him an evil leader. Not necessarily. Every leader have his cut out assignment from God. And every leader is there to fulfill prophecy. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 1 Kings chapter 19. Now, this is Elijah. Elijah had, uh, you know, the, he had killed the prophets of Baal. And Jezebel came after him. He ran away and then he, he met the Lord, and the Lord was talking to him. And now let's read from verse 15. Then the Lord said to him, to who Elijah now, Go, return, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, I want you to watch this now. Elijah has been praying to the Lord and said, Lord, look, man, they've killed all your prophets. Only me, I'm the only one alive. And then the Lord gave him an instruction. Watch this now. He says, Then the Lord said unto him, Go return on your, way to the, to the, uh, to, on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Syria. Yeah. God says, anoint, says, Go back on your way, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. Now Israel already had a king. Syria had their king. <laughs> Are you following me now? And then he says, And Elijah the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mohala, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. So Elijah was a prophet standing. Israel had a king in the name of, name of Ahab. Syria had a king. Now Elijah was alone talking with the Lord. And then here's the Lord's command to him. When you go back, take an oil, find Hazael, anoint him to be king over Syria. Find Jehu, anoint him to be king over Israel. Then Elisha, anointing to be a prophet in your place, not us to take over from you. You know why God was telling him that? Because your assignment is done. Watch now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 17. It shall be that whosoever escaped the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whosoever escaped the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Did you see that? Who is God about to kill? That he said, I'm setting two kings and a prophet to kill all these people. Even the prophet, God was setting him up to kill. And God set these, three, these two kings and one prophet and said, because... I don't want any one of them to escape. Now, who was God talking about? God was talking about dealing with the house of Ahab because of what Jezebel had done. And Elijah was interceding. Let me show it to you. Verse, 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 verse 13. Let me quickly read this now. So it was when Elijah heard it, he heard God, that he wrapped his face 
face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because of the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophet with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. Now who was seeking to take his life? Jezebel. So God gave him this command. Now he prayed to God and he received answers from the Lord. When you, when you read this story, when you read this story forward, you realize that Elijah did not anoint Jehu and then he did not anoint Hazel. He didn't. Rather, the only person he anointed was Elisha. And even the anointing of Elijah, you know, he found Elijah and threw his mantle on him and Elijah, Elijah began to follow him. And then later he left and Elisha, you know, took over from him as a prophet. So that's, that's what Elisha asked for. I want a double portion of what is on you. What was he asking for? I want to be a prophet in your stead. And you know, he got it. Praise God. Now, if you read the story, it was Elisha. One day, the Lord commanded him and then he saw his heir. And then he told him, hey, you're going to be king. And he told him what is going to happen. He said, look, I'm seeing what you're going to do to the house of Israel. And then he sent a young prophet to go anoint Jehu. You know the story. And that judgment for the house of Ahab started in the days of Elisha. Now why, how come, have you ever thought about this? How come Elijah did not, God specifically told him, go and anoint Jehu. Guana, no. He says, go on your way, you will find this. I'm reading this to tell you how God is involved with anointing kings and his reason. Now, you find two prophets, two kings anointed, and they are going to deal with one house, the house of Ahab. That was all God was after. And he anointed two kings and a prophet. Now, whatever these kings do, and this prophet does, if the judgment of the house of Ahab is not fulfilled in them, they are failures. So God chooses a leader. Now, think about it. In the season these kings are carrying out the judgment of, in the, for the house of Ahab, now whatever Ahab have done, or must have done, to in, in, invoke this kind of judgment, you don't really know. You can only read what you read here and say, oh, see what Ahab did, see what Jezebel did. But for God to say, look, I'm setting a target to finish this whole house. Now, when the, when the actual judgment begins and you are there, you say, ah, but this is not fair now. This is not fair now. This is not fair now. You see, it's the same thing with life. So God chooses leaders. He knows what he's looking at. Like I always say, God is looking at the whole earth. You are just looking beyond your eyes. He's looking at the whole earth. So he chooses leaders. Now, but see, we as God's children, we have a right to commune with him, to influence his decisions. But when we do that, we must be conscious that we have a role to play in carrying out his purpose for our nation. Now, there was an error that happened in, in the year 2015 in our nation. I'll tell you what that error is. Our time is almost up, but I'll just tell you that today we close. What happened? There was this wind of change that was blowing. And lots of people believed that, look, let's just change this thing. Let's just change this government. And they changed it. The heart was right. Hear me, I said, the heart was right. Because people just felt, look, enough is enough. Let's just change this so that these people will know that. You know, people even say, look, if the next one come in and they are bad, we'll change them too. Yes. But you know what the mistake people made? 
They changed the leadership. They thought we'll just change the president and the president worked magic. They changed the president and went back to sleep. Waiting for the president to do all the work. Right from day one, when this administration came in, the people should have been involved, engaging them on a daily basis. But you see, when you don't even know what you should change, that becomes a problem. Our time is up. Praise God. I'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.